What's up internet? Welcome back to the Wallet Monkey channel where we give you all the credit intel you need to grow your wallet. Today what I want to talk about is what to do if you're an immigrant and you want to start building credit or you're brand new to getting a social security number in any kind of way, any kind of capacity. You've never had a checking your savings account. So, uh, and what do you do? So what's interesting is that this is similar to building your credit from start. Um, the only difference is, is obviously, you know, you got green card, you got uh, paperwork, you're trying to get your social security number to begin with when you're an immigrant. And obviously once you've already been born here, if you're just trying to build credit, then um, you've already got it. But the what's interesting is this, this perfect credit formula, let's call it, which is written about in a book, which I'll share with you in just a second, is uh, pretty similar and works for both. Uh, apparently this guy had a lot of experience working at or with in some capacity, the credit bureaus. I can't remember, it's been a while since I listened to it. And uh, out of that, he kind of, you know, kept coming up with the running into the situation over and over and over again. And so he created his little formula. Here's the book right here. It's called Your Score. Hey, Insider Secrets. Yeah, so he had he was involved in some sort of way. This Anthony Davenport. It's a really good book. I've seen him getting kind of interviewed and rolled around, uh, rolled out around on the podcasts uh, for Audible. You can get it for free if you start an audiobook trial, which I think is like twenty nine ninety nine a month. Oh no, there you go, fourteen ninety five. So. You get a couple downloads a month and you're expanding uh, your uh, intelligence and, you know, the information that you're, you're able to get, right? So studying is never a bad thing. So that's the book. This is the formula that we're going to talk about in just a second. But the place to start, and this is the place, again, if you're brand new to building credit, where are you going to start? Basic checking account. So you need to pick the institutions you want to build with and you get a basic checking account set up. So American Express, Navy Fed, Penn Fed. A U.S. bank, Wells Fargo, uh, even though I wouldn't start there if, if it was me. Um, but yeah, you know, your, your typicals, your uh, Navy Fed, I would put dang near the top. American Express, Chase, uh, U.S. bank, right? The, the big players, Citibank. And so get a basic checking account. You need to start getting that transactional history. Remember, you just probably got your social security number uh, for an immigrant and now you've got no credit history at all. So what is needed? Credit history, okay. Transactional history in an ecosystem, like we've talked about. So this perfect credit formula that uh, Anthony Davenport talks about, it, what he says is to expect about a 740 or higher. Now this is still pretty true, and I think it'll still be true after FICO 10 rolls out as well, because uh, it's pretty simple. And I've seen this working with people who are brand new to building credit, people who are rebuilding credit. It, it's pretty interesting to watch. So, and I'll share some of those stories with you as we go, go through this. So here's the game plan, it's very simple. You open four cards at the start of a 90 day period, two AU accounts and two secured accounts. Now here's what's cool about it, is if you start with the AUs, then you wait until those report to one statement, you'll most likely be able to get at least one unsecured card. But you could just do it all on the same day and just say, forget it, I'm gonna build this credit history. And so you'd get two secured cards. Again, put those secured cards in the banking institutions you want to have a long-term relationship with. I think as time goes on, we're gonna, conti we're gonna continue to see consolidation in the banking sector. They're gonna keep scooping up these fintechs and before you know it, Amex is just gonna offer everything. There's gonna be like an Amex, a Chase, and maybe one or two other players. And they're gonna be huge conglomerates. Now eventually they'll have to be broken up like what we remember with AT&T and Bell South and you know what they're trying to do with Facebook and other social media platforms. But essentially this is where it goes. This is kind of how markets work. They fragment and then they consolidate and then they fragment and then they consolidate. And um, yeah, that's just kind of the cycle. So, all right. Um, so this JPM in, in Disco, that's just a JP Morgan uh, and a Discovery that were used as AUs in one of the examples. I used this data point in another video, I believe. And so one had a 7% utilization, the other one had a 64% utilization. So even a high percentage utilization. And this guy still had a ranging from a 702 to a 720. So they weren't even that good of AUs. So for as much as we're gonna get, dive into the weeds here of a use, you know, also too, it works if you don't really do that, right? So the AU, I would say it's must, much less important about trying to get the perfect AU and much more important to just get it and get something to start reporting. Okay, so let's go into the details, right? So the best AUs that report full credit history, meaning that it's not just from the day that you get started as an AU, they backdate the whole thing. So you get the average age of account. You get all that just like bang, right overnight. That's by far the best you could focus on. And that unfortunately is only a few banks and it's they're not the greatest, okay? Um, I could pick apart every single one of these banks. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Discover Capital One, okay? 
Capital One pulls all three on a brand new account. So, I mean, that in and of itself should, you know, should tell you. And then AU's that soft pull, so they don't hard pull, is uh, Citibank, Chase, and Amex. I know that Wells Fargo does hard pull, um, at least in 2019 and 2020 it did. It might have changed, doubt it. Um, but so at least in 2019, 2020, Wells Fargo was um, still doing a hard pull. Uh, I don't have data on the other ones. So, all right, here's a basic piece here. Does the issuer report authorized user? So here's your checklist. Every single bank does. Wells Fargo, US Bank, Chase, City, Capital One, Discover, Barclays, Bank of America, American Express, yes. And they also got minimum age, okay? Authorized user has to be 16 on Barclays, 15 on Discover, and uh, 18 on American Express, okay? Next is how many AUs can you have? On an account this I also think is pretty relevant and uh, important to know American Express uh, the minimum age oh we didn't have that we had 18 so this says 13 15 depending on card 13 or 15 depending on card oh that's interesting so two conflicting data points so you might want to just call and check right Bank of America there is no minimum age Barclays is actually 13 so again conflicting data there discover 15 we had that here too yep and then US Bank is 16 and then there is no minimum for the others mentioned here. Maximum number of AUs is 99 on American Express. Can you believe that? I, I really want to know if there's anyone who's ever done 99 AUs and like did anything good or bad happen? Like did you get an award or did they like shut down all your accounts because you're like you're insane? I, I don't know. I'd love to know though. Uh, if you know somebody like that or there's a story floating around the FICO forms that I don't know about, please comment below and share with me. Uh, Bank of America is maximum 9 AUs, Barclays 25. Uh, Depends on the account for cap one, no limit on Chase, 10 on City, five Discover, three HSBC, five on USAA, and seven on US Bank. So there we go. We've got basically this formula, which works really good for immigrants with brand new social security number and no credit history, as well as um, those that are looking to build credit to begin with. I guess the only additional piece of data that I would say is, yes, like I like I talked about earlier, it is much more important to just get an AU versus trying to figure out the best one, um, especially like take what you can get because the transactional history is what's gonna matter. So even if um, Amex does not bring over history, by the way, and that's one that like I know people are hugely disappointed about all the time, but they're going to start reporting from today. So you have the opportunity now to get transactional history with them between the AU card and the primary, okay? So I suggest you just start doing that. So like I said, it's it's more important um, to get it versus trying to get the perfect one. And especially what you have access to, AUs can tend to be a little bit expensive. You're somewhere between $350 and $700 per AU, unless you know somebody. So, I mean, that's kind of expensive, especially for somebody that's just now starting to get their, you know, they're kind of um, working uh, together in the United States and they just got their social security number. This might be really, really difficult for you to swing. So you're gonna take what you can get, but that's the formula. And, and I think sticking to something similar to this is, is a pretty good formula for success. Two AUs, two secured cards, basic checking accounts, start the whole thing off um, and, and go from there, right? Because what tends to happen in the beginning is you have to submit all your documentation over and over and over and over and over again. And actually what triggered this video was somebody asked, uh, how do you, um, something about credit unions and they're an immigrant and how do you, you know, which credit unions will allow immigrants, I think was the question. I have no idea. So the simple answer is when you don't know something like that, just call them. They'll gladly tell you, get to, get to the credit department, obviously, and talk to somebody over there and just tell them like, hey, here's, you know, I'm a citizen, I got a social security number, I got this, I got this, right? And just see if if that's enough for them. Um, if you don't have a social security number, I really don't know what your process looks like because I've never gone through that myself. And so you might have to provide additional information or that whole process might be completely different for you. I'm assuming you've already got an SSN, right? So anyways, there you have it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Uh, like this video so it helps get it in front of more people. And if you're brand new here, uh, just take a second, hit the red subscribe button, bell notification, turn it to all so you don't miss out on future uploads. We'll see you again real soon.